Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Oh, it's not letting me pin my comment. Good morning. There we go. Good morning to everyone. I'm excited about today because we have some new math we get to go over today. So hopefully everybody took a look at the new packet. It was available on Teams. Some of you went and picked it up. Good morning, good morning. This is what your do now looked like for those of you that, I don't know, can I go sideways? I guess you'd have to turn your phone. So this is where we are. We're on day one. It's the week four packet. Week four and five, we're on day one, the area of parallelograms through rectangle facts. So this was the opening do now that I had posted for you guys to do. As you can see, it's a review of something you did last year. Right, and we practiced this year with some harder ones. So if you got your packet, they also had given you your, um, the answer key to this, which wasn't that nice of them. So, let's see if I can okay. So, good morning to everybody. This is the packet we're on. The area of parallelograms through rectangle facts. I may have to turn my phone sideways for part of this, which means you'll have to turn your phone sideways. Um, it's just now 10 o'clock, so people are still logging on. Good morning. Wake your friends, it's Monday. Yep, good morning, good morning. Make sure you did your do now. Again, we're not gonna go over all of the problems because it looked like with the packet, they gave you guys the answer key. So hopefully you didn't just write answers in um, because as you know, when I told you to DM me the your work, the key is to show the work. You'll also see the directions were specific. Solve each problem and put a box around your final answer. Be sure your answer is in simplest form. Then use the key on the next page to check your work. Hint, change mixed numbers to improper fractions. That was also one of the hints that I gave you on the do now. This is what I had posted for you, that in your packet you were going to do the opening for day one. This was our reminder, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, I gave an example. Five and one third. And we just wanted to remember that the way to convert it to an improper fraction before we multiply is to multiply the whole number by the denominator, right? Multiply five times three. Then you had to take that answer and add one to it. So five times three is 15, plus one would be 16. And then I said, write it over the same denominator. <coughs> Excuse me, and that's where I got 16 thirds. So that was the example reminder that I gave you on the do now. Good morning, people are still logging in. So we'll give you another second to do that. I know people were just getting out of the community meeting. So hopefully you read what I posted last week about um, getting your packet ready. There was something they asked you to cut out of the packet, and we're going to go over that a little bit today, and I have a model for people. And then my last question was, how do you calculate the area of a rectangle? And again, that's another skill from fifth grade <coughs> Excuse me, that we're going to need to know to solve our problems today. 
okay? Okay, we're up a few more people. Anybody else? Good morning. So this was available in Teams. If you wanted to write them on paper and send me the pictures, you can. Um, you know, the do now, it's best to do it before class so that you have an idea of some of the skills that we're gonna be using in class. And people have just been sending me pictures of it in a DM in Instagram, and that's fine. So that's a great way to get your grades updated the fastest. Um, she was mentioning, Ms. Strickland was mentioning today at your advisory meeting that you can turn in your packets, but also remember if you've been already taking pictures of them for me and sending them to me that way, then that's fine. I've already graded your packet. At least for math. I'm just speaking for math. I don't know what, how your other teachers have asked you to submit your work. But we've been doing a nice job, people taking pictures of it. Um, and that's been good. Okay? Are there any questions about how you had to do the do now? Anybody want to jump on and tell me how they did number seven? Anybody want to go live for extra points? Sorry, I don't want to hit the... And tell me how you did number seven. We'll use that as one of our examples. It says one and a half times four and three fourths. Again, it's number seven in the introduction due now of day one. Good morning. Come on, where's all my volunteers? You guys are always really good at volunteering. I need somebody to volunteer to explain to us how we solved this problem. Any volunteers? For extra points. Okay, one just popped up. It's waiting, a little bit of a delay. Good morning, oh, don't show your face. <laughs> good morning though, it's good to see you. How are you, dear? Good. Miss you, it's good to see you. Do you want to go ahead and describe to people how you did number seven? Yeah. So Thanks. when I did number seven, I, 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 took the, I took the mixed numbers and I multiplied them. I multiplied it with the, the, the denominator and then I added it with the numerator. And okay. I, and then I took that answer and then I multiplied it again between each other and that's how I got my answer. Great. So for example, for the number one and a half, what did you get as your improper fraction? I got three halves. Great. So you had three halves. And then your second one, what did you get? Eleven. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Eleven fourths. So you had three halves. And okay, what's four times four? Four times. Oh, I messed up. It's okay. That's why we're checking our work. Good morning. Good morning. So right now we're looking at number seven for people that just jumped on. We're on number seven on the do now that was in your packet on day one for week four. We're doing new material today, but they're doing a warm up of older material because this is one of the skills you need to apply to the geometry that we're gonna be learning now. So I'm really excited we have new material. Um, but right now we're just doing number seven as an example. So, so go ahead, honey. I got three halves and 19 fourths. 
Okay, so you multiplied four times four and you got 16. And then you put it over the fourths. Oh. Great. And what did you get when you multiplied then? So let me write that on my paper for you. So what did you get then next when you multiplied three times 19? I got 57. Good. And then what did you get on the bottom? What's two times four? Eight, I got 57 eighths. 57 eighths, great, and great reading of the fraction. Okay, so then we're gonna remember that all fractions are just a division problem. So we're gonna write it as a division problem. And we're gonna take 57 divided by eight. How many times does eight go into 57? Good morning, good morning. What's the closest you can get without going over 57? If you count by eights, what's the closest you can get to 57? Guys, you can type it in the comments if you want to help out. Okay, so some people. Oh, 56 is 70. Okay, good. So 8 times 7 is 56. And because we're working with fractions, so we did our division, then we did our multiplication step, now we subtract, then we check. <clears throat> is 1 smaller than 8? Yes. Yes. So then we're done. And we're going to take the remainder and put it on the numerator of our fraction and the divisor goes as our denominator. And so that would be our final answer. Okay? Thanks for helping, honey. You can jump off now. Thank you. <coughs> okay, guys, so that's how we do it. That's number seven. And the reason we did that warm up is because we're gonna need that. We're gonna need that for the skill we're learning today. So let me go back to the screen. Good morning. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you have your packets, make sure you follow along. Oh, there's also, <clears throat> excuse me, a bonus. So make sure you do the bonus, although they may have already given you the answer for that. And then we'll, um, you can show me the work on that and submit it with a DM. Okay. So we're on the part that says new learning. That's the exciting part. Okay. Good job. I'm seeing people's messages. So I need you to look closely at the two shapes. Okay. We have a rectangle and we have a parallelogram. Okay. Now I'm going to turn my phone sideways so you can see them both at the same time. And so you may want to turn yours also just briefly okay so what are two things that these two shapes have in common we're going to start with this left hand box a rectangle and a parallelogram okay we're going to deal with this box two things in your box you should have already written when you did your prep work two things that they have in common okay you can type them in the comments let's see some things that these have in common a rectangle and a parallelogram. Okay, good. They both have four sides. That's a good one. Uh, same size. I don't know if we can judge that yet. Okay. I think that's part of what we'll be doing today. So, so far we have, they both have four sides. That's correct. We only want two things these shapes have in common. You should have two things written down on your paper at least. And I have a bunch of things I wrote down, so there's lots of right answers. Okay, this says they both have the same angles. Um, hmm. I'm not sure about that. 
but let's say they both have how many angles? Good, somebody said they both have parallel sides. I like it, a review of parallel. They sure do. They have four angles, good. So they both have four angles. Okay, that's something that they have in common. So maybe the fact that they're not the same angles is one of the things we could say, what is at least one thing that's different between them? So what's different, good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining. We're in the new distance packet. We're looking at the new learning. We're doing geometry. And today we're talking about parallelograms. So right now we're on the page where it says new learning. And we just listed a couple things that were the same about this rectangle and this parallelogram. Right, they both don't have right angles. So you could put that here. So they both have four angles. That would go in our common box, but the angles are not the same, okay? Because somebody said that the rectangle has right angles, and I don't believe these are right angles on this parallelogram. So that's a good answer, okay? <clears throat> good, they're different shapes. Yeah, we could say that. One thing that's different is they're both not they're both not rectangles and they're both not parallelograms. You know, each one is a different shape. For those of you that just jumped in, we had said that they had, they both had four sides. They had four angles. Who can tell me what we call a, thank you for the reminders. People are reminding people, you don't have to put all your names in the chat. Um, what do we call shapes that have four sides since you brought up the four sides? Who can remind us what we call shapes like this rectangle and parallelogram that have four sides? You can just type it in the comment. What do we call shapes that have four sides? It's a category of shapes. Good. Somebody brought up, it says quad something. Yes, you're right. So quad is the prefix. They're both quadrilaterals. Remember quad means what number? What does quad mean? We talked about it recently um, in one of our units because quadrants, right? We talked about the quadrant had how many, how many quadrants are there of the coordinate plane? Four, good. And we talked about quad, people call them quads when they drive those vehicles that have those big wheels. I told you in Arizona, those are popular where I used to live. So four, these four sides, a shape that has four sides is a quadrilateral. Okay, so these are both quadrilaterals. So now that we've done enough for each box, I'll tell you all the ones that I wrote down and you can add them to your box. So two things that the shapes rectangle and parallelogram have in common. They both had four sides. <laughs> Excuse me. They both have two sets of sides that are the same. Somebody touched on that a little bit, right? They both have two pairs of sides that are the same. So we have two short sides and two long sides of this rank rectangle. And same with the parallelogram, two long sides, two short sides. They both have four angles, okay? They're both quadrilaterals. And by definition, they're actually both parallelograms, okay? Because the definition of a parallelogram is that it has to have two pairs of parallel sides. And this rectangle meets that criteria. So that's what we wrote for the things that are in common. And then at least one thing that was different between them, we said that they have different sized angles because somebody mentioned the rectangle has 90 degree angles. And then the other thing is they're both not rectangles. Okay. So even though a rectangle is a type of parallelogram because it meets the definition, a parallelogram does not meet the definition of being a rectangle because it does not have 
90 degree angles. It doesn't have right angles. And that's part of the definition of a rectangle that we would have learned a long time ago. Okay, great job on that. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. It says a parallelogram is a quadrilateral, that's a four-sided shape, that has two sets of parallel lines, okay? And they're just reviewing what parallel means. That means that you have lines that are in the same plane and they never intersect. That means they go on and on and on forever and they will never intersect. This is packet distance learning four and five, day one. Distance learning four and five, day one, okay? And they have, they have this on page two, if these are numbered correctly. Okay, so a parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has two sets of parallel lines. And then they're showing you a bunch of different ones. You know, these are the traditional parallelograms. Here's a real skinny one, but it's still a parallelogram because these angles are not right angles. Here's one, you know, turned on its side. So remember, a shape doesn't have to be flat you know, on one of its sides to actually meet the criteria. There's no, that doesn't have anything to do with the definition. So then it says, recall that to find the area of a rectangle, we multiply its base by its height using the formula below. Okay, so this is the formula we're using in Eureka. <clears throat> Excuse me, and the reason, good morning, good morning. The reason that I asked you in your do now Right when I posted this do now, question three said, how do you calculate the area of a rectangle? Was because I wanted to bring you right back to this because this is something that you've learned in prior grades, okay? So area of a rectangle is the base times its height. Now we also used to call it length times its width, okay? So for our purposes now, we're gonna be looking for a base and a height. Now it says, how would you, how do you think you would find the area of a parallelogram? Now, if you've already read the rest of the material, obviously you have an idea of that. But anybody wanna type in? You can type into your comments. Remember, participation is also making comments Okay, good. People have some ideas they're posting. So we're going to examine that a little further. So here we are for our activity. Now, if you didn't already do this, that's fine, because I'm going to do it for you. It says today we're going to find the area of a parallelogram. We're going to use our knowledge of the area of rectangles to help us. And this is why I said the other day you might need scissors. Good morning. And they're giving us a quick little reminder of area. Okay. The area of a shape is the number of square units inside that shape. Good morning. Good. A lot of you put the comments in. The height times the width. Okay. So we're kind of mixing up a couple of the definitions. We can have base and height, or we can have length and width. Okay, so we're going to want to make sure we use those words correctly. Okay, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Okay, so in order to do today's activity, they wanted you to cut out the shape. They gave you a template. It also has measurements, seven inches and three inches. Okay, so I did that for you. I don't think the one that they did actually is drawn to scale. So they're just giving artificial um, measurements and that's okay. So this is mine. I cut it out of pink paper so you could see it a little better. Okay. So I measured, I actually did measure it. That's why mine looks a little longer, but yours is fine if you cut it out of that. And if you didn't, you can just follow along with what I'm doing. So this is a parallelogram. Okay. You can see that because I have it laying on a rectangular piece of paper. So you can see, obviously, you know, these lines go at a different angle, these sides. Okay. So 
they wanted you to cut it out. And then we're going to take a closer look at it. Did anybody cut it out? Give me a thumbs up if you did this part. Just put a thumbs up in the comments. It's okay if you didn't, but if you did, I'm just curious how many people got the new packet or printed it out and did it. Or you could have done what I did. <clears throat> and that's okay. You could have done it the way I did it and just measured your own. So part of, um, this is just a side comment. Part of doing distance learning is we're gonna have to think creatively. Okay, some of us, so for example, to be reflective of myself, I don't consider myself a very creative person. I'm more of a logical thinker. So sometimes it takes a little while for me to think more creatively. So if you don't have a way to do something, please use your creativity, because I know so many of you are so, so creative, to think of a way you could do it. So you could have cut it out of any, good morning, you could have cut it out of any paper, okay? Or you could even use just scratch paper and draw on it yourself. So you can do it any way you want to. It's okay if you didn't do it, I'm, I'm gonna do it for you. Okay, so what they wanted you to do was draw a dotted line perpendicular to the base to show the triangle you will cut, okay? So remember this symbol, and we've talked about this this year, this symbol, the little box at the base of a line shows that those two lines are perpendicular. Okay, remember that means they meet at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so this is just old information I'm reviewing. When you see these boxes, usually you'll see them in geometry and triangles and other shapes, then that means that they're meeting at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so they wanted you to take your shape, and here's mine, and draw You know, and I would use, it's hard to do this with one hand since we have to hold the phone too. But again, we're just trying to all be creative. Okay. So then I drew my line. Okay. And I would cut it out. So. This is my piece. So I made a second part of the model. Okay. So imagine that I drew the line just like they did. And they told you to cut it. Okay. You could also draw it, it said, from the top down. Okay. So you could have drawn it on this side right along this edge. Okay. And then step three says use the space below and try to rearrange your pieces to form a, a rectangle, sorry, to form a rectangle. So if I cut my piece, and again, it's not perfect, we're just being creative and using what we're supposed to. And I take this piece of the parallelogram, you can see, okay? So this was my parallelogram. Oh, I even have it flipped a different direction, which is okay. So if I had my parallelogram, okay, and then I drew my line and cut my piece. Now it said, make it form a rectangle. And you can see if I slide this piece of the parallelogram, let me do it again. If I cut it at a 90 degree angle with the base, these are two 90 degree angles, just like that shows in the picture. I don't know if that's, taking a while to focus, okay? If I take that piece, cut it, and slide it, then I have a rectangle. Hmm, interesting. So, why did they want me to figure that out? Okay, step four said, glue or tape both parts of the parallelogram in the space below to make a rectangle. Two examples of how you could do this are below. So I could do it
they're saying if you had cut off this side even. Okay, if I'd cut off that top piece like they were talking about, then I would slide it over to here. I still get a rectangle, okay? Even if I had it turned wacky and I took my piece, you know, from the top and cut it at the 90 degree angle. Oh, and I have it flipped. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way I turn it, I'm gonna get a rectangle, okay? And that's all they're showing you here, is when you take that edge of the parallelogram, okay? If I take this piece of parallelogram and I cut it where these two 90 degree angles meet so that this becomes a straight edge, just like we said in a rectangle, a rectangle has four 90 degree angles. Well, now I have two 90 degree angles on this side. And if I put this piece back, again, it's not perfect. Then I have two 90 degree angles on this side. Okay, so the reason that's important is now they want us for step five to find out what is the area of the rectangle that we created. Okay, so when we go back to the measurements, the measurements were on the picture. Okay, so this length, the long side, was seven inches, and this side was three inches. Okay, So what is this length? Again, this was, this was the base of my parallelogram. What is this length going to be? Somebody can type it in. What is this length of this piece of the parallelogram going to be? Good morning. People are typing in zero. I don't think zero. What was the length of my parallelogram before I cut anything off of it? <clears throat> okay, let's look back. Okay, so this is my parallelogram. This length is seven inches. Okay, so here's my parallelogram that I made. Okay. This is the one I made. So I'm starting with a length of seven inches. I'm going to write it here. Seven inches. Even if I take off this little piece, am I changing the length of this line? Give me a Y for yes and an N for no. All I did was cut off the end. This line is seven inches. If I take this away, is this still seven inches? Hmm, people are saying no. Well, the answer is yes. It is still seven inches. Okay, and I just measured it to prove it. Yes, it is seven inches, okay? Because I didn't really take anything off this length. The parallelogram started with a seven inch base. All I did was cut this at a 90 degree angle and move it. So this is still seven inches. What do you think this height is then?
You could just type it in. If this part's seven, what is this side? Good. People are typing it in. It's okay. We're not going to judge how easy it is for people. Some people, it takes a minute. So this side is still seven. This side is still three. Oh, I just dropped my little piece. So. So what I have now is I have a rectangle with a base of seven inches and a height of three inches. Now they're telling us in our new information, we're gonna put the base of seven here and the height of three here. And then what would be our area in square inches if you had a base of seven and a height of three? Good morning, good morning. Just type in your answer. Good. People are starting to get the right answer. 21. If my base is seven and my height is three inches and the area of a rectangle is base times height, Then I would multiply my seven inches times my three inches. Seven times three is 21. And inches times inches is inches squared. And I'd get 21 square inches or 21 inches squared. So that's what their takeaway is today, is that the area of a parallelogram is the length of its base multiplied by its height. Exactly the same as we would use for a rectangle and they're giving you a picture here to remind you okay because sometimes they're going to show you a height you're not even going to have to come up with the number on the edge okay they're going to give you the height and the base and so we're going to look at some of these pictures now okay we don't need to say that it's we're not going to judge how easy or hard we think it is okay because it's going to get difficult really quickly when we start using you know, sixth grade numbers. Yes, three times seven is not a sixth grade number, but we're gonna be doing it with fractions just like we've been doing. And then, you know, it might be a different story. So let's be supportive, okay? So this says, while this is equivalent to the height, you will not generally see height drawn like this in your problem sets, okay? They're showing two different ways on this parallelogram to show the height, okay? One way, they just took it from this top edge down so that it cuts through kind of awkwardly, okay? They're saying that is the height of that parallelogram, but that's not how they're going to um, show it. What they're gonna show is like this, okay? They're gonna take a line from the top and where it meets at a 90 degree angle, this is gonna be your height. Your base is still only gonna be your base of your parallelogram, not this dotted line. Okay, so it says, you'll generally see height drawn outside of the parallelogram, excuse me, see height drawn outside of the parallelogram like this. Okay, so they're giving you hints on when you look at pictures on testing, how it's going to look. Okay. Now, all they did was they took this parallelogram, these are the same parallelogram and they flipped it on its side and they got this one and then they drew the lines down again to a 90 degree angle where it comes out from the base it says this parallelogram to the left is the same image as above just rotated notice how the height can be found outside of the parallelogram as long as it meets the base at a right angle meaning that it's perpendicular, 
okay? Just like we talked about above. So you can draw the height of it as long as it comes down and meets a line from the base at a 90 degree angle and it's perpendicular. And its end point is on the same side as the base. Okay, so they're saying you're basically drawing a little triangle on the outside. You'd start at the top, you would draw the line straight down and then straight across until you meet the base. Okay, guys, we're not gonna talk negatively to each other. Just ignore each other when people aren't being supportive. This is not the time to be unsupportive. Now, for all of you that thought it was so easy then, here we go with our examples. It says calculate the area of this parallelogram. This figure is not drawn to scale. That means if you measured it with a ruler, you know, if I take my ruler now and try to measure this in centimeters, you know, that's not, it's not drawn to scale. Okay, so they have a base that has five and five, six centimeters. They drew the height by taking a line straight down and making it perpendicular to the line that attaches to the base. And they have one seventh centimeter, okay? It says, I know the base of the figure is five and five, six centimeters, and the height of the figure is one seventh centimeter. I can substitute these values into the equation to calculate the area. So, here's our equation that the area equals a base times a height. So, they took the base, five and five, six centimeters, and rewrote it here. They took the height that they calculated, one seventh centimeter, and put it here. Notice that we leave the units, okay? I wanna see units when you show me the work. Now, we know from doing our do now and fifth and sixth grade math, we can't take a mixed number and multiply it by a fraction without modifying it first, okay? So that's what this box was telling you. In order to efficiently multiply these numbers, I have to rename five and five six as a fraction greater than one. Okay, remember a fraction greater than one means an improper fraction. So, they're showing you one way, since six six is equal to one, 30 over six is equal to five. And then when they add the remaining five six, that's how you get 35 six, okay? That's another way of saying the method that we know where you take the five times six and get 30, and we add five and get 35 and write it over the same denominator, okay? Now one seventh is already a fraction, so we don't need to do anything to it. Then we simply multiply numerator times numerator, 35 times one is 35, and denominator times denominator, six times seven is 42. And we can't find a number Sorry, I'm reading what people are writing. Yeah, guys, please, please be respectful. Okay. So this is the area of this parallelogram. Any questions? Yeah, let's get back to work, please. Okay. So You'll notice there's also a tip here. It says visit bit.ly con parallelogram for extra help. I have assigned that in Khan Academy. There's three lessons that go with this lesson that are in Khan Academy. So you can either look this up by yourself and that's one of them, or you can go in through your Khan Academy um, through Clever and watch it there, okay? But I've added two more to that so that there's a little extra information to help you. So now it's your turn to so solve each question. The reason I'm reading so much is because I wanted to save time today, but we'll have other people jump in. Solve each question in the space provided. Refer back to the examples in this lesson if you get stuck. For number one through three, find the area of each parallelogram below. Note that the figures are not drawn to scale. So they're saying don't, 
take a ruler and try to see if these are, you know, the right size, because they're obviously not, they're on paper. So here we go. This is a parallelogram and we have a base, we have a side, and then they drew a height and they've even labeled it for us. It says, I know that this value is neither the base nor the height, so I will not need it to find the area, okay? Because they've given you a height, they don't need you to use the side of the diagonal side. They want you to use the height, which is always a line that meets the base at a 90 degree angle, okay? Always meets it at a 90 degree angle. So what are the two numbers that we're gonna multiply here for our base times our height? You can just type them in. The two numbers you're multiplying then to solve this problem, the area of this parallelogram. The base first times the height. I did say stop, I said it's enough. Thank you. So the base times the height. Type it into the comments, what you're gonna to multiply together for the base times the height. Just remember the height of the parallelogram is where it meets the base at a right angle. So this symbol shows that these are perpendicular. They meet at a 90 degree angle. Base times the height. We're gonna run out of time and then you're gonna have more to do on your own. Okay. Somebody said six times five. Remember this tip I just said, the height of a parallelogram is where it meets the base at a right angle. Is the line that's measured five at a right angle with six? Again, don't just copy what other people have. Think about the definition. Base times height. Thank you. Amore's got it. Base times height. Five is not a height. Okay, that's height times base. You want to do it in the right order. Base times height. Good. Base times height. The base is six. The height is four. Four meets the six. Excuse me. Four meets the base at a 90 degree angle. Okay. So it's six centimeters times four centimeters, which gives you how many centimeters squared? Don't write four times six. The base is not four. It doesn't The formula is not height times base. It's base times height. If you do it in the wrong order, you're going to get it wrong because that's going to show me that you're not solving it the way the equation taught you to. Okay. Base times height. Thank you for those that corrected it. Okay. Number two, I know it's time to wrap up. I'm just going to show you this. They're showing you in some problems on tests and park, they're going to give you an, a distractor. They're going to give you extra numbers you don't need. You need to find your parallelogram, find the base of it. Okay. This is a dotted line. So this is not the base. The base of the parallelogram is four and a third meters. Then you need to find the height. The height is where you start at the top of the parallelogram, come down perpendicular to the base, right? You have to come down at a 90 degree angle to a line that either connects to the base or is inside. So for example, if they had drawn the line straight down inside, that would also work as your height. So here for your height, if you're doing your base times height, you're gonna take four and a third meters times three and a half meters. Okay, so for your work, you're gonna finish two and three and you're gonna DM me those. And then your exit ticket, take a look at four and five, but you're gonna finish two and three 
and then you're going to work on your exit ticket. It's labeled exit ticket. Okay. Importantly, it says calculate the area and show all your work. If you don't show me the work and you just show me answers because you used a calculator or whatever, then you didn't show the work. Okay. You can check your work, but make sure you show it. And that's only three problems. Okay. Any questions on what you're doing? You're going to finish two and three and DM me the picture of the work. And then the same with your exit ticket. Then I will also make sure the exit ticket is posted separately in Teams. Okay, I really miss you guys. I know we're a little over our time. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, Ms. Strickland was clear about it and I've been clear about it. You can text me, you can call me, you can email me, you can DM me. We've got multiple ways that you can contact us and get help, there's no excuse. Yes, you can still do iReady. Yes, you can still do Khan Academy for extra points. It's not the end of the quarter yet. So let's get those grades up, okay? Miss you guys. Be nice to each other, okay? All right, stay safe. See you Wednesday.